Hello, Em. My name is Wen Hao Wang. I'm a librarian from the university library. And I just received a request from a history professor last week. And he invited me to have a teach session about how to help you find appropriate resources because many of you use unsuitable resources for assignment two and which cause a reduced grade. As a freshman, this situation usually happens. And your next assignment is the final research paper and was 25% of the total class grade. It, so it would be very necessary for me to introduce something about information literacy to you and help you to master the correct way of getting appropriate resources by evaluating the authority and usability of the resources. So let's get started with our learning outcomes. After today's session, you will be able to understand the definition of information literacy and explain why it is important. You will be able to think critically about resources authority and demonstrate the ability of different, different authoritative source and non-authoritative source. You will be able to identify various types of authority and demonstrate the ability of evaluating the given resources by its authority and usability. You will be able to locate the university databases website and select appropriate databases when doing your research. And you will be able to select relevant and appropriate resources when writing your academic papers. So can anyone tell me what is information literacy based on your understanding? Or what skills should a person master if he considers to have information literacy? Michael, please. So according to Michael, information literacy means how to find information online. So how about James? James thinks that a person have information literacy means he can find useful information. Yeah, you both got a part of the answer right, but not all of it. So a person has information literacy means that he must be able to recognize when information is needed and he must has the has the ability to locate, especially evaluate the information, and he can use the needed information effectively. So based on the ACRL information literacy framework, there are six main standards. And today, my goal is to help you find appropriate and useful resources by evaluating the resources authority. So let's just focus on the first standard, which is authority is constructed and contextual. This standard means that authors' expertise and credibility can influence the authority of the information resources, and the information resources are also evaluated based on the information need and context in which the information will be used. So uh, based on this definition, what is our need of information? I mean, in which context? John, please. So according to John, we use the information resources in academic environment. That's correct. So which means we require the resources to have extremely high authority and credibility. The resources has to be very precise. Otherwise, we might cite wrong resources. And even more, we might have plagiarism problem. That's why authority of the resources are so important. So can everyone take a while and have a brief reflection of where did you get your resources for assignment 2? And have you tried to evaluate the authority of your resources and how? So Michael again, please. So Michael said he get his resources from Reddit and from the posts related to his topic. Okay, so how about Danny? So according to Danny, he get his resources from a self media article. And actually, the self media did, didn't identify who is the author. Okay, so Michael and Danny's problem are two typical reasons why people find inappropriate resources. To be simple, people didn't pay attention to where the resources come from and who is the author. So if we only focus on finding resources for our topic and didn't pay attention to the usability of the resources, we may get wrong resources for our paper. So let's get back to the first question, where the resources come from? So can you get in pair with the people sitting next to you 
and have a quick discuss about what types of publishers are considered as authoritative resources. Tom Fleet. So, according to Tom, academic papers, journals, and periodicals are considered as authoritative resources. I think he is absolutely correct. Here I provide a list of different type of authority sources, which includes peer review articles, periodicals, scientific and technical reports and archives, patent literature, government publications, science database articles, and academic articles. All the resources cited from these sources are considered as authoritative resources. I also give a list of non-authoritative sources. The sources the resources in this list don't mean that they are 100% unusable, but you need to evaluate their author's authority before you use for academic purpose. The sources are, in, are, the sources are articles from Google, from Wikipedia, from self-media, from blogs, from, and from news reports that without any reliable citations. When we are evaluating the authority of the authors, we need to aware that there is a lot of different type of authority, such as some people have special subject expertise, such as scholarship. Some people have special social position, such as he is a public officer or he has a special title. And some people have special experience, such as he was participating in a his historical event. Although they have different types of authority, but the materials they write about their specific fields are recognized as authority resources, especially the people who have some special experience. The materials they wrote are considered as the first-hand material and which has the extremely high authenticity, which means it has high research value and can be used for academic purpose. So here's an example. Assume that we are researching in our history paper and the topic is why Japanese attacked the Pearl Harbor in World War II. And we find several articles written by John Toland, Harry Gallery, Edwin Palmer, Gordon Willema, and Jackson B. Schrimper. So we are evaluating the resources authority. We find that John Holland is a famous American writer and historian. Harry Gallery is a professor of military history at St. John State University. And Edwin Palmer was an American writer who specialized in military history. And Golden Willema is a, is a World War II veteran. He was a soldier and who experienced the attack of Pearl Harbor. And Jackson B. Schrimber, he was a, he's a writer of self-media and some social media. So as we can see that John Holland and Edwin Palmer are recognized as authoritative authors because they have social positions. They are known as historian, right? And Harry Gallery has subject expertise because he is a state university's professor. And Golden Willema is also known as an authoritative author because he has some special experience. What he, he writes can be seen as first-hand materials because he really experienced the p attack of Pearl Harbor in his real life. And what Jackson B. Schrimper wrote can't be used for academic purpose because he don't have of any of the social position, subject expertise, and special experience. So he is not an authoritative author. So I believe through this example, you will be able to identify the different type of authority and evaluate the resources authority by yourself. Okay, so let's have a review of what we talked about before and have a quick group activity. Let's form into four groups. Each group has four to five people. You will evaluate the authority and usability of the given resources. Group one takes topic one. Group two takes topic two. Group three will have topic three and group four will have topic four. So while you are evaluating the resources, please take your time and think about what we discussed before. Where do the resources come from? Who is the author? And what type of authority do the author have? Okay, so uh, Linda from group one says the resources is from government publication and archive, so it will be an authority resources. They are correct. And Simon from group two says 
the result is, is from periodical, and the author's name is Roderick John and Peter Su. They both have special social position and subject expertise. They are all known as historian and professor, so the, so the result is as an authority result is. That's correct. And the, and the discussion, discussion result for group 3 is, where most HP is a Britannian from World War II, and the book you wrote can be seen as first-hand material, so it can be used for academic purpose. So the results would be uh, authority resources. They are, they, are per they are perfectly correct. And group for group four, they said their resources is an, not an authority resources because they can't find any information about the author online, and they can't identify what type of authority he has. Yeah, they are correct because I found this. I found these resources from Reddit, so it's a unauthorized website as well. So you see, you all get the right answers. Good work, and I see. I believe that you all know how to evaluate the usability and authority of the resources now. Evaluate the authors and sources take time, and sometimes it may lead you to a tricky situation. For example, two authors may have same name. And one is an authoritative author, and the other doesn't. So, as a university librarian, today I'm going to introduce a new way to get appropriate and useful resources more efficiently, which is to use university databases when you do research. University library databases have several advantages. First, you can search for articles or books on a topic for assignments from a variety of sources. Then you can read the full text of books and the most of the articles that you find. But most importantly, you can be confident that the information you find is authoritative resources and they are at a high standard of information literacy. Then I will show you how to assess our university's library databases and how to choose appropriate databases for your topic. The first step is to type Western Library into the Google search box. The second step is to click on the database button under the research tool button. The third step is to describe what types of your topic is into the research database search box to find the appropriate database. The fourth step is to put the keywords of your topic into the search bar, and then you will get appropriate resources. So uh, let's do a quick exercise of finding appropriate databases for the following topics. Remember, the first step is always to choose appropriate databases before you search for your resources. Okay, so let's see what you've got. Hi, Lisa. So what you've got for the first topic? So you have the database LGBTQ Life with full text databases. Right, right, great. So how many results do you get? So you get over two, tw 20,000 resources. Yeah, so you see, there's ton of resources in the university databases, and all of them are authoritative resources. So Simon, what do you got for the second topic? So you have library and literature and information science full text databases. Yeah, that's correct. So you see, it is very quick for you to find resources and also really resources in the university library databases. So just use the library databases for research. So in conclusion, there are incalculable resources available on the internet, but actually we only need a very little part of them, especially when we're in an academic environment. So we need to choose the most appropriate and authoritative resources and cut off the useless information. Otherwise, we may get ourselves into some unnecessary troubles. And the university databases is definitely one of the best options for students to do their research. So for the assessment part for today's session, I want you to write a brief reflection about your understanding of information literacy. Please focus on the importance of the authority. I want you to indicate why the resources you choose for your assignment two are, in, are inappropriate. Please write from both the perspectives of author and source. I want you to find two appropriate resources for assignment two again from the suitable university databases. 
and you can provide any feedback about the session if you want. Please remember to email your reflection to my email. And remember that your reflection will be graded as a part of your participation. And here's my contact information. I will be always available at the university library, so if you have any question about how to use the university databases, please feel free to walk in and ask for help. Thank you.